everyone, Elaine Page here and uh, welcome to West End Woofs Online. Now, many years ago, my good friend Bernadette Peters, alongside Mary Tyler Moore, uh, put together something called Broadway Box in the hope of trying to find good long-term forever home for animals that are living in shelters. And uh, since we're living in this ongoing coronavirus pandemic, uh, Bernadette and I thought it might be an idea if we could set something similar to that up here in the UK. So that's what we've done. We've joined forces and uh, we've set up what we're going to call West End Woofs Online. <laughs> So to tell you more about what we're trying to achieve, here is my good friend, Bernadette Peters. Hi, Bernadette. Hi. Well, the, the perk about this is I get to see you, even uh -huh. though it is virtual. But um, I'm so happy that we're doing this because you know, we, we, we started this in the, in the States and we found so many wonderful animals that were in shelters. But there was a misconception that animals in shelters were not good animals, but actually they're wonderful animals. And, and people that have been uh, have come on hard times and had to move to a place that didn't allow animals, had to give up their animals. So you're finding beloved members of the family in shelters and uh, the other thing about a rescue animal is they know they've been rescued they do yeah. remember their past and they make the most wonderful pets and they just love you forever forever and ever and also and we'll talk about do you remember i was talking to you about if you want a specific breed that there yeah. are breed specific rescues like if you want a poodle or you want a bichon or you want a labadoodle and we're going to list them at the end of this show so you you can find them how do you normally begin let's kick this off i mean i know you've been doing broadway box for many many years so kick us off and show us how 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 it goes okay well we usually start with the musical number Right. And so we have the musical number that we did live the last time we were live in Schubert Alley in New York. It's from um, Hello Dolly, Put On Your Sunday Clothes. And the lyrics will, were rewritten by Gavin Creel, who oh. won an Olivier Award for Book of Mormon in your country. And in it, you're going to find one of our pals. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about, but let's see it first, shall we? Okay, so here we go. From the heart of Schubert Alley, put on your Sunday clothes. Out there, there's a woman outside of Yonkers. It's way out there beyond this hick town, Barnaby. There's a slick town, Barnaby. Out there, full of shine and full of sparkle. Close your eyes and see it glisten, Barnaby.
there Bernadette hello Dolly and of course there I see our mutual friend Charlie Stimp who I worked with here at the London Palladium two or three years ago in pantomime well he is a darling and he and I joined hello Dolly at the same time and he's just a beautiful supportive uh, member of the cast and star and and I just adored him do you remember where we first met Oh, well, how can I ever forget it? <laughs> Cameron McIntosh was having a 30th anniversary of all the musicals that he'd put on over the years. And I think it was at the Lyceum Theatre here in, in London. The dressing room, I remember I'm, it was a chorus dressing room and I'm sitting looking in the mirror and I look down and there's Julia McKenzie and then there's Millicent Martin and then there's Dame Judi Dench and then there's Julie Andrews and then there's Ruthie Henschel on the right side. On the left side of me was uh, Maria Friedman and there you were. And I went, oh my God, there's Elaine Page. Oh. I was very in awe of you sitting oh, yes. out there this was elaine page with cats and it was oh stop stop no. i've been talking about dogs and cats but really you don't need to go there <laughs> i'm yes and you were an icon and i just knew of you and there you were and i was a little in well, equally you know as we're doing a loving it's true to say that i feel the same about you because oh. i've seen you in so many musicals on broadway over the years and uh, particularly oh. in stephen sondheim's work because you've done a great deal of his his shows haven't you yes i have but i also want to mention that i met the queen <laughs> right <laughs> now, you, you probably have tea with the queen all the time where when, were you when you met the queen cameron had us all line up and she was there that night and she, oh, was okay, I she had her purse the queen <laughs> always carries her handbag yes <laughs> do you know what's in it no <laughs> i suspect a powder puff a hanky that's probably it <laughs> until of course we then worked together again didn't we many many years later on broadway and well at washington first at the kennedy center in follies do you remember yeah. we used to meet every night backstage do you remember before the show started what did you used to well, do well i used to have <laughs> i had to give you a hug because you're the only person i ever met was smaller than me <laughs> you were like holding a little doll. It was like, oh, a little doll. I have to. <laughs> well, you're hardly tall. You're so. You were, you were a very good sport about it. I have to say. <laughs> but the thing I remember that tap routine. Do you remember that Terry White sang? Um, uh, Who's that woman? That's right, and it was like an eight-minute tap routine and i remember that every day at rehearsals that was what we started with because once we'd done the tap routine we all sort of staggered off heaving for breath and uh, and groaning you know because we were all out of breath but nobody else had to do what i did which was literally change my shoes from my tap shoes into my normal shoes powder my nose and then dash back on to sing that endless song of verse after verse after verse of i'm still here and you were brilliant you were brilliant you used to bring down the house every night you know no one knew you were what you were out of breath but i i do remember it being a bit of a trial for me because uh, you know remembering the words because there's as you know there's a verse after verse after verse and as you also know stephen sondheim never ever repeats anything uh, lyrically does he no he so, doesn't like to do that no. no one night i went on and i forgot four lines one after the other four straight lines went out of my head and i made up four straight lines i made them up and they rhymed 
And I couldn't believe myself. I thought, wow, how clever am I? And as I'm walking off into the darkness from the bright lights of the stage, into the darkness of the wings, there in front of me I saw coming into vision <laughs> Stephen. Stephen <laughs> was standing in the wings. And he said to me, well, well done, Elaine. He said, um, you know, great improvisation there. He said, I, I, but I... You did, you made it all right, well done. And I said, yes, I know, sorry about that. I just thought, yes, you're right, at least they rhymed. And he said, yes, yes. He said, do you think perhaps just one night when I'm in, you might sing the lyric that I wrote? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I've never forgotten that. I was so embarrassed. It was awful. And of course, it would be the night that he was in. And, and he's there watching always. Yeah, I yeah. messed up. He he heard me mess up good and proper. But right. listen, let's talk about the dogs. So forget about us for a minute. So, Bernadette, I thought perhaps we could start by showing some of the videos. I've uh, gathered up some of my uh, thespian pals <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I've gotten them to uh, make some videos along with their pets to tell us about some of the shelters here in the UK that we're trying to support and raise money for and in the hope, of course, of finding some wonderful homes for these beautiful animals that are sort of, well, they're just hanging around in shelters and we need to find them some good homes. So yeah. why don't we start with our friend? Oh, I know. Let's start with Charlie Stemp. Good idea. Hi, guys. Charlie Stemp here coming to you from sunny old London. What a strange and confusing time we live in, but I have the honour and the privilege to introduce to you some of the amazing dogs at All Dogs Matter. Have a look and if you see any of our dogs that you are interested in or are fallen in love with, please contact as soon as you can. I hope you have a lovely day and stay safe. Thank you. ta -ra! Hi guys, me and Bruno. Uh, so Bruno is uh, actually a Portuguese dog uh, that came to us just over a week ago. Uh, we think that he was uh, probably a yard dog, um, not used to being in the house. Um, and he was a bit of a bundle of nerves when he first arrived. Uh, so we placed him with a fosterer that has a, a calm dog uh, to show him the ropes. And over the last week, he's calmed down a lot. He's doing really, really well. And we're starting to see his true personality. And he's a lovely, lovely guy. So, hi, this is Danielle, one of our ex-racing greyhounds. Um, she's come to the shelter to find her forever home. Um, she's very, very snuggly and very cuddly. Um, loves attention. Um, doesn't need a lot of exercise. Um, she can probably do about half an hour to an hour a day. And then she'd just like to cuddle up with you on the sofa. Um, and then now I don't know what else to say. Guys, this is Mabel. She is one of our ex-racing greyhounds that got brought to us last week. Um, she's done her races and now she's ready to look for her forever retirement home where she can just chill on the sofa, be lazy. Um, we usually be home uh, greyhounds to people that have never had a dog before because they're generally so easy. Um, and they don't really need a lot of exercise. I know a lot of people think they do because of what they're bred for, but they actually don't need um, a lot of exercise. However, she is one of our more bouncier greyhounds out the lot. Um, she probably would enjoy a lot more exercise than the other ones we have here. Um, she really enjoys her walk and she does have a high play drive, um, which means she likes to chase small fairy things and anything that moves. She seems to like horses as well. Um, but she will need to be kept on a lead uh, for the rest of her life, probably just because of the high prey drive. But that doesn't mean she can't have a little run around maybe at the weekend in an off lead enclosed pen. Um, but yeah, she's lovely, very sweet and affectionate, just looking for her forever home. Lucy, who's probably brought into us today, um, he's not in a very good way. He's quite old, I'd say around 12 to 13 years of age. Um, he does need his vet visit, uh, so we can get him checked over just to make sure everything is all okay. Um, and then he'll be placed into a foster home, uh, and then we'll see how he gets on, and then hopefully he'll be up for adoption in the next couple of weeks. Hi guys, this is Woody. He's one of our ex-racing greyhounds that came into us last week. He's ready for his retirement home. 
Um, he's very, very affectionate, but he is a major foodie. Um, he lives for food. Um, as you can see, he's staring at the shit at the moment, waiting for his next biscuit. Um, but generally, a really easy, nice dog, really good on the lead. Uh, greyhounds are generally taught to walk next to you, so they don't need any kind of training in that respect. They do need to wear a muzzle when they're out and about on walks. Um, that's just because they've been obviously bred to chase uh, small things around the track. Um, so for precautions they must be muzzled out on walks just in case they think a small dog is a, a small fluffy rabbit or something. Um, it doesn't end very well. But generally they're really, really nice, easy dogs. Um, we generally go home these. But yeah, so Woody's looking for his uh, new forever retirement home. Benson, he came to us as a stray from the pound. He's only around eight to nine months old um, and he's already quite a big boy. So he's got a lot of growing to do. He's got to grow into these ears and this big head. Um, he is such a lovely, lovely affectionate boy, especially once he gets to know you. He's just a big, big puppy. Um, he is wary and nervous of new people initially, um, but we've been working on that for the last couple of weeks and he's getting so much better. Um, he does need quite a lot of exercise, so I would say maybe an hour in the morning, hour at night, just to keep him happy. Um, and he does need some basic training. And again, we've been doing some of that here, uh, but we will need someone that's going to continue to do the training with him. Um, but yeah, as you can see, look, he's just a big, just a big baby. This is Clark Peters here, and I'm just talking to you. Just talking to you, all right? Nobody else. You know, sometimes people can get on your nerves, don't they? Get on your last nerves. But I tell you what, if you had a four-legged friend, you know, like a dog that you would come home to and just see you so wagging his tail and go, hey, man, I'm here. I'm here for you. You know, wouldn't that be nice? I had a dog for many years, and I realized that when he left, or when I left it, that there was something that was left a void in my life, you know? A dog will give you unconditional love. And the reason why I'm talking about dogs is because Many Tears Animal Rescue, Many Tears Animal Rescue, look them up online, right? They service about 3,000 dogs a year. Find homes for them, right? They look after them they've, with, with vets and with food and caring and love and bring people together as well. We at West End Wolfs, I know that sounds weird, doesn't it? West End Wolfs. <laughs> well, how about Broadway Barks? All of us actors, all of us in our business, we like these animals. We'd like you to take responsibility for one too. Yeah? Reach on out. Reach on out. Reach out to Many Tears Animal Rescue in Carmarthen, Wales. That's the one that's over here, okay? Or go to your local one. Pick up a dog. Have a friend for life, right? See what it's like to be loved unconditionally. <laughs> yeah, West End Wolves. Don't let the dogs pout. No, 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 no. Don't let the dogs pout. Welcome to Many Tears. Here we take in dogs that need us, dogs that wouldn't have a future without us. Many are ex-breeding dogs, lots of them kill pounds, some from Romania and other countries, and we need your support. three-month-old cabochon puppy who has come to Many Tears Rescue because he is missing one of his back legs. Um, that's okay, we love him just as he is and he's managing extremely well on three legs. Uh, we're just assessing him now that he should be ready to go to a new home very soon. London. She's a beautiful female with Chihuahua. She's come in with a broken front leg, bless her. Um, as you can see, she's, she's not carrying it very well. 
So she is booked in to see a specialist vet and we are taking x-rays to see what we can do to help her and we are ensuring that she's comfortable and she's loved, she enjoys cuddles and uh, we will soon be getting her mended and on her way to a new home. meeting strangers and new dogs but we're working on that aren't we but once he loves you his heart is yours completely and he loves his cuddles do you know he is a young puppy who's been brought into many tears rescue from rehoming He's come to us with a cleft palate, so he's actually got a hole in the top of his mouth, um, which our vet is going to take a look at, and we'll see if we can get him all mended before he goes to his new home. Opie, as you can see, loves cuddles, um, and he loves to play with his toys, and he loves to pull all of his blankets out of his bed. Hello, I'm Bonnie Langford, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is Poppy. Her first time on camera. Better do it well, hey kiddo. <laughs> During the pandemic, there was such challenging times for us all. Uh, but maybe there's something positive out of it. Some downtime to be able to rethink our lives. And this was something positive to add to our lives. She lends such joy and such friendship. I have never met so many people because of Poppy. She really is challenging, but gorgeous. I'm really happy to support Broadway Barks. And now we've got West End Wolves here in London. Can't wait to meet everybody. It's such a fantastic and worthy cause. We've got to get more people connected with beautiful little puppy dogs like Poppy. Ow. Don't bite my fingers. <laughs> Take care. Welcome, Mark, the vet. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us here on West End Woofs. Right off the bat, what are the advantages of uh, rescuing an animal from a shelter rather than buying a dog or a cat? First of all, hello, uh, <laughs> Elaine and Bernadette. Hello. Big fans of you both. Um, Elaine, as you know, I've met you before in Paul O'Grady's show. Bernadette, I'm a massive fan of you, especially from The Jerk. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit starstruck, I have to admit. Um, with regard to rescuing, one of the advantages, I think, of rescue, rescue animals is they're just, they're just ready-made pets uh, that can just fit into your household and, uh, you know, become your new um, best friend. Uh, second thing, obviously, financially, rescue pets are often... A hell of a lot cheaper than especially at the moment i mean lockdown puppies incredible five six seven eight thousand pounds um wow. uh, so you're you're making a saving and i think as i say you're you're saving an animal's life and they are usually saving yours at the same time so there's no downside uh, to rescue pets and often people will say but you don't know where they've come from and you don't know what their background and at the moment with the the puppies coming into the uk from abroad, you don't know their background either. So that doesn't really wash. Is this about Lucy's law? Because I know you set, up, set this up, haven't you? You're very keen to try and obviously uh, stop this dreadful puppy farming. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, well, well Lucy's law um, is now law in England. It's been promised in, in uh, Wales next year and Scotland as well Wonderful. at some point. And basically Lucy's law is a ban on uh, the commercial third party sale of puppies and kittens. So from pet shops, pet stores, which which means the only place you can go to get a pet, a dog or a cat, is direct to the breeder or better still, obviously, to a rescue shelter. And so that automatically makes all breeders accountable. So you have to physically see the puppy or kitten interacting with its mum in the place it was born. Um, it was named after very brave, very beautiful, very funny 
Cavalier King Charles Spaniel called Lucy, obviously, and she was an ex-breeding dog rescued from a, a, a licensed legal puppy farm in Wales. Uh, she sadly died after three years of, of freedom. She became wow. a bit of a Facebook star. And we named, we honoured the campaign after her. Uh, we got it over the line and it came into law in April this year in England, which means from now on, you, you just can't buy a puppy from a pet store. Uh, there's a new law that I'm working on now, which is the banned puppy imports law, which means that puppies yes. can actually be coming in from overseas puppy farms, from right. Russian puppy mills. So we've got an e-petition, which people can go to the government website and find. The hashtag is banned puppy imports. And the solution is, of course, to raise the minimum age from 15 weeks to six months. Uh, so puppies are protected against rabies, which means we're protected against rabies. The, the, the laws are easy to enforce because the secondary teeth are through, the permanent teeth at six months. Right. So we can actually know how old a puppy is. Before it's 15 weeks, you can't really tell. I salute you, Mark, that you that's such a wonderful thing you've accomplished and are going, trying to accomplish. We had in the States, we had a shipment that came in of French bulldog puppies and a bunch, some of them had come dead. Yeah. And from the and the from the other country, I can't remember what country it was. It was from the Ukraine. Yeah, it was an amazing case because I think it was, they came into Toronto and I think forty two or, or had died. Some of them had been wrapped in cling film. Some of the oh containers. Most of them, the ones that were still alive, were in a really bad state. Are you saying they wrapped the containers so they couldn't breathe, as if they were a piece of luggage? What is yeah. wrong? I, th I think it was I, I think it was a genuine mistake but that's what they discovered when they came off the plane oh my God. Uh, and it's horrific but you know wrap them or not wrap them it's it's not ethical to transport yeah. young puppies but it's yeah. all legal that's the point it's all legal and it all needs to stop as soon as possible how important do you think it is to start a relationship with the vet and the dog because the vet will be with that dog hopefully for all of its life Hopefully. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, very important for a number of reasons. Um, weighing sounds simple, but to keep an accurate record of your dog or cat's weight, but also to, to detect problems before they happen. You know, prevention is so much better than cure. Same yeah. with humans. Pick up lumps, up, be able to ask questions. I'm a bit biased, but I would say one of the best practices I've ever worked at, we had an annual booster, which is the vaccinations and general health check. And then we did a free six month check as well. And that really worked well. What a lot of people don't realise is a lot of practices, probably all of them actually, they do free nurse clinics. You can get your animal's weight checked and their, their wow. teeth looked at and it doesn't usually cost anything or it costs a lot less. And then what happens is if the nurse thinks there's something wrong, they alert, they alert the vet and an appointment yeah. can be made. So it's a resource that I don't think is um, used as much as it should be. Perhaps it's not known about enough, no. is it? Can I ask you another question? Because um, I know, I, I, am I right in thinking that you were helpful to um, finding Dylan for our, our Prime Minister? Is that right? Yeah, I, uh -huh. uh, I saw... So that's a, he's a rescue dog, isn't he, Dylan? Yeah, I was keen. Uh, I'm a good friend of Carrie, who's Boris's um, fiance. Um, and there was a rumour going around Downing Street that they were looking for a rescue dog. Um, Carrie's only had rescue dogs before. And what I wanted to do really was to highlight uh, not just rescue dogs, but also volunteer run rescues. So um, Friends of Animals Wales, which is where Dylan's from, uh, the victims of, victims of uh, third party puppy dealing. So uh, Dylan was going to be drowned because he's got an undershot jaw. He couldn't be sold. Uh, I wanted to promote, obviously, not just rescue, but the fact that you can find puppies in rescue, which a lot of people don't realise. Yes. And of course, Lucy's Law. So in one tiny little fluffy ball of, of Jack Russell Cross, I think it was 15 weeks at the time, oh. there were so many boxes ticked into kind of raising awareness to be in touch with Carrie and Boris uh, and to provide and to source that rescue dog for them meant that the profile of rescue was just raised globally. Um, and he went on the election trail and, and uh, he became a little superstar himself. And, and, I, and I still, this is how weird stuff is. I'm, I'm on a WhatsApp group with Carrie and Boris and they send me pictures of the baby and, uh, and Dylan. <laughs> so this, this is how, I mean, this is someone Fantastic. who someone was a nerdy, geeky, nature loving, caterpillar collecting boy who was really shy and introvert and had no idea about politics, obviously. And I'm now uh, at that sort of level, sourcing dogs for the prime minister, changing laws and hopefully changing a few more too. But it's all about animals. And in case Elaine wants to adopt 
a dog and she's thinking about size isn't it true that dogs of course they have to go out and get their exercise but isn't it true they sleep a lot anyway my so favorite breed of dog to rescue yeah. is a great greyhound really? uh, and the reason i mention that is because you've triggered me bernadette <laughs> is because they sleep a lot a lot yeah. of people think greyhounds need all this energy and they're out and about exercising all the time they're not they're couch potatoes they do require exercise, obviously, like every dog and every animal, but okay. they do spend a lot of their time sleeping on sofas. So I would recommend at the moment, um, sadly, we've still got, you're making huge progress in your country, uh, Bernadette, with regard to greyhound racing. We're, we're way behind you. So oh. we, we have a surplus of rescue uh, greyhounds, and I can't recommend them enough. That's my dream. When, I've, when all this has calmed down my end, my next campaign if you like is to adopt a, a rescue greyhound or maybe two i just find them adorable there's there's so many out there and they've gone through a lot of abuse and they just deserve uh this this amazing life they're very loving they're very beautiful but my neighbor right next door had one they're always leaning on you like they <laughs> just lean on you because they love you and they, you you know what is that badge you're wearing that rosette have you been so this is this is the yeah. official this is the official lucy's law campaign rosette oh and if you don't mind i'm going to mention i did actually write it was a 10-year campaign <laughs> 10-year oh, grassroots campaign well done yeah it's how we did it and uh, all the obstructions we came up against is that 300 visits to westminster uh the the dylan the dog stories in here and uh and loads loads more and there's, there's a lot of sort of campaigning tips in here as well for other people that not just want to change laws for animals but change laws or raise awareness to protect the most vulnerable any everyone can do it and as long as you've got empathy kindness and compassion in every sort of message you put out and every mission statement that you write you can do anything you want so that's out now it's on amazon and uh, it's doing it's doing all right i'm i'm amazed oh well you're an inspiration yeah. and a great example that we can all learn from this and we can't thank you enough we're just so thrilled that you were here uh, thank right. you so much, Mark, for giving up your precious, precious time. Now get back and look after those lovely <laughs> yeah. <of> animals. <laughs> I will. I promise I will. And thank you for inviting me on. It's been uh, it's just been so wonderful talking to you both. Really, big fan. And to yeah. you. And to you, thank Mark. You. Thanks so All much. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take care. <laughs> There you are, Bernadette, with gorgeous Rosalie, and she's a staffy. Now, let's talk. You tell us about the Staffy and Stray Rescue uh, Shelter. This is my staffy, and I. This is my second staffy. Oh, they are the most precious dogs. They used to be called the nanny dog because at the World War One, they were the dog of choice for families because they were such darling, sweet. Here you are, darling. And they've actually been victimized. You know, the tough guys have have taken them and and treated them badly. And anyway, they're they're just darling dogs. Yeah, and bad reputation. But they're actually naturally a lovely, lovely animal. It's always how, how animals are raised. So I'm going to have the privilege of introducing the Staffy Rescues. It's called Staffy and Stray Rescue, and it's dedicating to changing the perceptions of this misunderstood breed. And um, all I can tell you is that they are a lovely, lovely, lovely dog. And you are going to be meeting some of them. And hopefully this rescue is close by to where you might be living. And you might go down and get yourself a Staffy.
I'm Ruthie Henschel and I have been involved with Broadway Barks before but not West End Woofs because this is the first year. West End Woofs! Can't believe my luck. This is Winnie. I, uh, she's my second dog. I never had a dog before, uh, a dog called Poppy who I loved dearly as I do Winnie and she was a gift. So I had my first dog at the age of 39. Couldn't be without one now. We are talking about the shelters that are looking after all these dogs that have been abandoned, neglected, um, ill. Um, it's called the, let me get this right, uh, it's called the Leicester Animal Aid. Um, and it looks after about 40 dogs and 30 cats, something like that, and gives them treatment they need, uh, rehomes them. I mean, there are so many animals that need love and care and you don't have to um, have them as puppies. They are just as wonderful um, when you go and get them from a shelter. And you are giving a dog a home who may have been appallingly neglected. So this is Winnie. I'm Ruthie, please donate money to this amazing cause so that we can rehome more animals. Bye Winnie. Yeah, look, see. They don't want to see your bum. Bye. Hello, welcome to Leicester Animal Aid. We're a rescue centre for cats and dogs. We normally rehome about 400 cats and dogs each year we're situated in the rural of Leicestershire. Certainly have a look around if you need us, just let us know. Hi, this is He-Man. He's a five-year-old ex-racing greyhound. Um, he's one of the many that we've taken in since lockdown started. Um, so he's currently looking for a home. As you can see, he's very friendly um, and loves for some attention. Um, and the way to his heart is food and any soft toy or cuddly toy. This is Percy. He's a three-year-old ex-racing greyhound. He is so loving and sweet, as you can see. He absolutely loves being on the sofa. He loves soft toys. He's absolutely obsessed with them. And he's looking for a very special forever home. This is Bruce and Betty. They are two of the many kittens we've got here at the centre right now. We have had a lot of cats and kittens and pregnant mums over the past six months since lockdown started. Um, but we've got a lot of enrichment here for them. These guys are really sweet and playful. They're very loving. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, then let us know. This is Missy. She's eight years old. She came into the centre about three weeks ago due to her previous owners being unable to care for her any longer. She's a lovely girl, she likes her home comfort, she likes her fuss but she will let you know when she's had enough and as you can see she lives in this nice area where she's got plenty of exciting things to climb all over. This is Bella, she's two years old and um, she came into us through her previous owner as you can see, she's very playful, she's very active, so she's going to need a home where someone can keep her stimulated and get her energy out. She is very friendly and she does enjoy her fuss, but she can be quite anxious, so it will need to be on her own terms, um, so it will need to be someone who's willing to give her the space that she needs. This is Rupert, he's a three-year-old French Bulldog and um, he recently came in to us um, as he's been used for stud breeding. Um, as you can see, he loves the of attention um, and he's a real sweetheart. Bye! 
Hey guys, it's Kerry Ellis here. Now, I am here to tell you about my little dog, Ocho. Some of you may know me from musicals like West End and Broadway shows, Wicked and Cats and Oliver, We Will Rock You. But today, it's all about Ocho. I've had Ocho 11 years and the joy he brings me. He's not actually behaving today because <laughs> he's not sitting for the camera, but um, it brings us so much joy. He's always happy to see us. He's been a brilliant companion for our little family um, for 11 years and we just adore him. He's so well behaved. They're just joyous when you come in the door, they give you lots of love, they lower your stress levels and they're so important, I think, in especially in our family home. Um, if you guys know anybody out there that could rehome um, a puppy, a dog, a cat, a kitten, then please, please, please get in touch with one of the shelters below because they do really need your help, especially at the moment. Um, and believe me, you won't regret it. They're amazing and I wouldn't be without one. So um, send in lots of love and um, happy homing. Well, hello there, Twiggy. How are you? It's I'm absolutely good. ages since I've seen you. Welcome, welcome to West End Woofs. Thank you for asking me to be involved. Oh, Twiggy, I couldn't be more thrilled when I heard you were going to join us because we're, we're all about the same age. But I was a teenager in the States when you became, you blew up and we all wanted to be Twiggy. <laughs> And we were waiting for you on the cover of Vogue, and we were waiting for you on Harper's Bazaar, and we all wore the at high school all the little twiggies painted on our <laughs> eyes. And you, and then I listened to Tea with Twiggy, but I listened to you and Elaine talk about your lives as young girls on Carnaby. So talk about it, Elaine. Talk about that time. <laughs> Twiggy, I mean, I know that you and I have kind of uh, chatted and in, done interviews and stuff in the past, and one of the things that I remember came out, we both, as I remember, have a passion for ice skating. That's and right. And <laughs> we both have a nasty job at a hairdresser's, is that right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, of course, the other thing I remember is that uh, both you and I, being children of the 60s, uh, used to walk up and down the King's Road, is that right? Oh, absolutely. Every Saturday, it was like uh, everyone had to do it. You put your best clothes. It, you, you spent the whole week working out what you were going to wear, right? That's right. And then you'd parade up and down the King's Road for most of the day. Yes, yes. I would go up one side uh, in the That's morning, right. then stop for a, <laughs> a, a coffee and some a light lunch, and then parade, as you say, back down the other side in the afternoon. Know, hysterical. Oh. I get quite a lot of mail from young girls who always say oh I wish I'd have lived in the six you know been a teenager in the 60s I think it's it catch it captured an essence of life that they really would have loved to have experienced you made quite a big splash when you came a big hit that was a lovely thing that my one and only on Broadway that you and Tommy Toon did when Tommy rang me about it because we tried to get a film going about 10 years before and couldn't get the finance or whatever so in early 80s, he rang me and he said, I think I've got our project going. I've got the money. We've got the money raised. And I said, wow. oh, when do we start filming? And he said, no, it's, it's not a film. It's going to be on Broadway. And I went, oh, I said, I can't do that. And he said to me, <laughs> he said to me there's no such word as can't. Pack your yeah. suitcase and get to New York. And it was a good lesson, actually, because there is no such word as can't. I was just scared. It's scary. Yeah. Broadway, major. <laughs> so I got to sing these gorgeous Gershwin songs every night, and um, and it was amazing. It's like well, you've yeah. both been in massive hits on Broadway, and if you're in a hit yeah. on Broadway, it's it's incredible. It's special, isn't it? Something yeah. very special. It's magical. When you're on Broadway. It's, I think it's especially when you're a Brit to perform yeah. on. Way, it means even more in a way. I yeah, and every, I used to love it because, you know, in the daytime, you're walking along the streets or going a, a, to have a coffee or something, and everyone stops and talks to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw the show last night. It was fantastic. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, hello. <laughs> but tell us about your great love for greyhounds, and you're going to introduce uh, one of the shelters and where oh, that yeah. came from. Well, you know, I. I love all animals, as we all do, and, and I love dogs, and I've had various dogs over the years in my life. 
about 10 years ago, I took my, my lovely pussycat, who is no, no longer with us, but she lived till 18. She had a very good life. But she wasn't very well, so I took her to my vet, and I was reading things on the notice board, and this one jumped out. It said, please help to find Gracie and Joe a new home. They'd lived with this family for 10 years, and now the family were moving to South America, and they couldn't take oh. them. And they said, we've got to find a home that they can go to together because they've always lived together. And, and, it, and it made me cry, actually. I, I burst into tears when I read it. In the, in, I thought they must have thought I was nuts. Anyway, I took down the number of the Greyhound rescue place that they were in. And the first time I rang them, I didn't tell them who I was. I just said, I saw this blah, blah, blah tell me the story and they filled me in a bit more and they said you know it's very hard to find a home for two greyhounds together and I couldn't stop thinking about it for for about three days in the end I rang them back and I told them who I was and I said maybe I can I've had I've got an idea I know a friend who's a journalist who's a great dog dog and animal lover how would you feel if I got him to do a story and and I could come down and meet them and maybe we can do a a photo shoot, <laughs> and um, which is what we did. They had about five inquiries, because it was two greyhounds, remember, and they picked the one they thought would be best, and they lived out their lives there. I, you know, well, that together. was together. Yeah, so oh, it was a ha happy ending. <laughs> yeah. So it does prove, you see, that's why this is such a brilliant idea of Bernadette's and your Elaine, that if you can get the word out there, and that's what yeah. people like us can help to do, those particular dogs um, have been uh, worked and worked and worked, and yeah. then um, they kind of just tossed aside, aren't it's they? It's terrible. Thank God for these wonderful people who run the Greyhound Trust. And this one that I'm telling you about today is the Greyhound Compassion and Greyhound Rescue in Boston, Lincolnshire. And they, they've been going, uh, you know, two Greyhound lovers have been running it for about 35 years. Some people probably think greyhounds, oh, they're so big and they'll need a lot of exercise. Apparently, <laughs> I was told in good faith from the greyhound people but that they're actually really affectionate, very gentle, very calm. I mean, they need exercise like all dogs, but not over the top. And actually, their favorite thing is a big soft sofa or a big soft bed. <laughs> And then yes, they relieved and not have to run anywhere and just oh, relax a bit. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they make great family pets because they're great with kids. Yes. No, I know years ago I had an Afghan and they're, I mean, they're gorgeous, Huge. but oh my God, you let them off the lead. I, I used oh. to be in Hyde Park for like eight hours sometimes because <laughs> you'd get within an inch of them and then they'd <laughs> run again. <laughs> Very funny. Let's take a look at uh, at the shelter that you have very kindly uh, uh, brought to light, Twiggy. And thanks so okay. much for joining us on, oh, on this. Oh, thank you. If there's anything else I can do, I'm I'm here. <laughs> thanks so very much. Thank you, Twiggy. Lots of love. love you. Love to see you. <laughs> Firstly, we'd like to thank you all for giving Greyhound Rescue the opportunity to promote our kennels and promote some of our lovely dogs for rehoming. So without further ado, please meet Jo. She's our little amputee dog. Please don't feel sorry for her. She's absolutely full of fun. She has a great passion for life and really enjoys herself. Our second dog of choice waiting for that forever home is William. As you can see, he's a really stunning dog and he's got such a kind heart and gentle soul. Our next stunning male is Logan. As you can see, he's a big, powerful dog. Yet another black male. This is Teddy. Unfortunately, we find that people just forget about the black males for some reason, but we think they're lovely. And Teddy craves affection and love. This is Billy, and I know we shouldn't, but he's one of our favourite dogs. He's been with us such a long, long time, and that forever home hasn't come up yet, but we dearly hope it will, because he's such a loving boy. Our next male is Sam. I hope you can see he's a very beautiful blue boy. 
he's so laid back, he's almost horizontal, and he would absolutely love to be on your couch. We also have dogs at the rescue that cannot be rehomed due to some of them are too traumatised, such as Roger, to face the outside world. We also have lovely Edgar, who I'm afraid is totally blind and traumatised by his past, so he will be here for life where we will absolutely love and care for him. Obviously we have many more greyhounds in our care and Covid has lost our fundraising overnight and lost us our main sponsors, Greyhound Compassion, whom of which have been our life support over many years. There seems to be no government funding for animals. It's a worry because these dogs still need care. This is Wish. He was rescued by Karen and Dawn. He's a super pet, calm, low maintenance, gentle, lazy and affectionate. Very steady on the lead, very undemanding. He's a fantastic pet dog. Hi, I'm Lulu and I'm tuning in with you guys from London. This is Fudge. Are you sitting okay? Are you comfortable? He's so good, look. He could be uncomfortable. He would never... He is the most, he's a cockapoo. He is the most loving, generous, warm companion. And I've only had him over a year now. So he's, look at you sitting there. I mean, look at this, look at this doggy. Look at him, look at him, he's so cute. We're going out now. But um, that's why he's got his uh, harness on. Fudge has been, especially during the lockdown, the COVID lockdown in London. I mean, I have had support, but I've, a lot of the time I've been on my own here. So he's there all the time, always, just <laughs> adorable, sweet love. I mean, he is probably the most, are you pushing against me because you're uncomfortable? Up on his hind legs, look at that. Just so trusting so loving um you can't have anything better than a sweet dog as your companion can you say wolf you should say wolf wolf or maybe just wave your hand <laughs> and how sweet is that it just lets me do what i want oh um i don't know what else to say can't you tell he brings me joy and hopefully I bring him, although he looks a wee bit sad. I don't know what's going on with him this morning. Ooh. Okay, Lulu and Fudge saying, Mr. Fudge and Lulu saying, bye for now. Hi there, it's Michael Ball here and I'm, I'm in my office at home in London. And like all of us, been going through this extraordinary time, but you know what has helped me get through? And that's my beautiful boys. Danny and Dylan. Um, dogs bring so much to our lives. They bring us happiness, they bring us joy, they bring us love, they bring us faithfulness and commitment and a reason, a reason to go out, a reason to engage with the day. Um, so I want to tell you about the Forever Hounds Trust. They're a fantastic organisation who can help you to find the right dog for you. Um, so check out the information that's coming up. Uh, remember, <sighs> dogs enrich our lives in ways that we can hardly begin to imagine. If you've had a dog, you know that. If you haven't, maybe now's the time to think about giving a home to a dog that really needs it. So have a look at this, the Forever Hounds Trust. So this is Sunny. This is Sunny. And where did he come from? Yeah, so Sunny's been rescued from the racing industry. Um, we know he's raced quite a lot. He's been in with us now for a few weeks and um, he's been doing really well. Uh, he really likes to hang out with people. He really likes treats, as you can see. Um, he likes to meet people and he likes sort of gentle walks and he likes a bit of gentle fest. So he's doing really well. We're really pleased with him. And is he ready for home? 
Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be neutered um, at the end of this week and uh, he's had all, all his vaccinations and he's all up to date. And after that, he's ready to go. Well done, Sunny. Yes. Harrison. Yes, this is Harrison. Yeah, Harrison came into us a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, and he's not in great shape, to be honest. We're a little bit worried about him. Um, he has been racing until kind of uh, very recently, um, and he came in with all kinds of, kind of issues and, and potential injuries. Um, and as you can see, he's quite underweight as well. Yeah. So yeah, we're a little bit concerned about him to be honest. He's seen the vet um, and is having treatment, but uh, yeah, not in great shape. He's a really sweet boy as you can see. He's very gentle. He's very sweet. He, he really enjoys a little bit of soft um, fest as he's doing now. Um, but yeah, he's, he's growing in confidence every day, but he was really sad when he first came in. He's, you know, he's, still, he's still a little bit sad now. So he, he probably needs quite a special home. Absolutely. I'm really looking for a foster home for him initially, um, but a special home, someone who's going to be able to keep his life quite small, someone who's going to be able to kind of help him to gradually um, kind of get better and, uh, you know, to tend to his, his issues, his injuries. So, yeah, a really special home, someone who's going to take it really soft and gently with him. been able to have a dog because I've always been touring away or I've been filming away I actually live abroad which is where I am now talking to you so I would have been terribly selfish and it would have been terribly unfair to the dog also but that doesn't mean to say just because I can't have one that you can't have one so if you are ready to give a very loving home and a responsible home to a dog, then let me introduce you to some wonderful and amazing dogs at the National Animal Welfare Trust in Hertfordshire in England. Now, the National Animal Welfare Trust originally was established during World War II, and they used to bring animals in and house them and look after them during the Blitz. And then eventually later it became a dog rescue kennel to help to stop puppies being sold for experiments. Now these days all the wonderful experienced staff and the marvellous volunteers are working very hard at looking after over 400 abandoned and homeless animals. And their job is to rehome them. And I was wondering if any of you guys out there could provide a loving home. Whether you're alone or single or you're a couple or families with children, then take a look. And if you'd like to take a bundle of joy home, then get in touch with us, please. Um, remember this, a dog is not just for Christmas or COVID, it's for life and we want a loving home to give joy to both you and the dog forever many thanks for listening keep safe and i'll see you soon lots of love <laughs>
time, Renee. <laughs> um, and these, you can probably hear them. Uh, this is magic. Say hello, magic. magic. Magic is, oh my God. Magic is, I think she's five. We got her from Battersea, so we don't really know how old she is. Say hello, magic. Um, but she's very, very cute. Um, and this is Wolfie. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wolfie is three. Um, and we've had her from a puppy. And this little um, thing. Come here. <laughs> This is Roxy and her donuts. There you go. <laughs> and she is six months old. And we've had her since puppy as well, which is still a puppy. Um, yeah, those are my doggies. Doggies. Oh. <laughs> so, as you can't really see, buddy, he's blending in with my jumper. Hi, there it is. So, this white one here is Scamp. He's the one we've had the longest. He's just had a fresh trim. His ears are quite short. <laughs> um, we got actually got him from a website um, called Free Loved. So we sort of rescued him. He was with another home and we took him with us. He is the best ever. He's quite old now. Um, and this here, this little crazy one, is Buddy. <laughs> but I'm actually looking after my friend's dog, Bonnie, who is... <laughs> currently trying to find her little treat it's just there babes <laughs> bless her but uh, my two are up in liverpool and i'm in london and they are lady and prince and their brother and sister and our little prince we got them from my mum's friend who um has so many and she gave us them we're so grateful um and prince is deaf so we've spent like our kind of our lives trying to like teach him how to do things via like gestures and things. And oh my he's gosh. Oh, I know. And I love them and I miss them so much. They mean the world to me. So oh, yeah, it's like mine. <laughs> They're gorgeous. Aww. So today we just wanted to talk about West End Woofs, everyone. West yes. End Woofs, which is a, a rehoming and fundraising event that's partnering up with lots of charities and shelters in the UK um, to hopefully rehome lots of dogs and find their forever home. Yes, yes. So if you are thinking of getting a dog, um, please, please go and rescue one. Um, they are literally, there's no love like a dog um, and it's for an no. amazing cause. So please, please go and rescue a little puppy. Yes. yes we are so excited to be a part of this as well because our dogs mean the world to us as you can probably tell so make sure you consider doing this and also keep your eyes peeled for future events mm -hmm. that yeah. yeah west end works everyone <laughs> west end works. <laughs> bye, bye. hiya hello hello <laughs> this is bingy i'm maria this is Buddy, I'm Sonia. And this is Toto, and I'm Joe. Toto's had a long, long journey to get here. He's a rescue dog all the way from China. And he was on the streets as far as we know, but he's here now and he's been absolutely beautiful for the last year, doing what only dogs can do, which is talk to us in lots of different ways. Um, Buddy and Toto have been such extraordinary emotional support to us, particularly in the last few months. They're a reason to get up in the morning. Mm. They're a reason to smile. They're a reason to go for a walk. <laughs> um, they've been everything to us. Um, Helping Dogs Cats at UK uh, are an incredible charity. There are so many beautiful dogs that will give you so much happiness. If you can just reach out, get one of them, I promise you, you will. it will enhance your life. So um, I hope you do it and that you have as much fun with your dogs as we do. Mara, Mara, I know it's so exciting. You're gonna be on TV. So let me introduce us. We are Helping Dogs and Cats UK. We're a small team who assist with the rescue, rehabilitation and rehoming of cats and dogs from the UK and Romania. We are all volunteers and absolutely love what we do. We're a happy rescue family. Since we were founded in 2018, we have helped to save over 400 dogs from the streets of Romania and rehomed hundreds of cats here in the UK. The streets of Romania are a tough place for pups. No shelter, a lack of food, busy roads and some very unfriendly locals. 
Many pups are found abandoned at the side of the road, in the mountains or on the streets, often without their mums to offer the protection they need. Our team of rescuers work really hard to keep these pups safe for us and allow us to help them. We're a committed rescue and our aim is to help as many animals as we can to find the loving homes they so deserve. We will never give up on an animal, we will do everything that we can. As a small non-profit rescue, we work hard with fundraising to ensure that we can help our rescuers in Romania to pay for food, vet treatments and day-to-day running costs. We're also hoping to raise funds to have our own land here in the UK so we can provide much needed kennels and a cattery to help more animals. In this video, you will see some of the pups that have been rescued in Romania and will soon be travelling to the UK. When the pups arrive, our amazing team of fosterers are waiting with open arms and lots of cuddles. Our pups will spend some time learning the basics and once settled, will be available for adoption. If you would like to find out more about what we do, then please feel free to check us out on Facebook, where you can see all the animals that we have available and also have a look at how you can help raise our much needed funds. Oh, cats! How can I forget cats? I know they don't woof, but they're still special to us. This gorgeous boy is Arlo. He has been in foster with us for a long time now, and we would love to find him his forever home for Christmas. So what do you think, guys? Do any of you have enough love to share with one of these babies? Please get in contact with us. Thank you. Hello, Bob Lindsay. How are you? How wonderful to see you. And thank you so much right off the bat for helping us with our online event of West End Woofs. What have you been up to whilst we're going through this ongoing coronavirus pandemic? I mean, it's strange times, right? Well, you know, the question is, people always say, how are you? I, I never know how to answer that anymore. I mean, it's been such a complicated time. But we've decided with the Royal Theatrical Fund, of which I'm president, I met a couple of guys called uh, Paul Jackson, who you probably know, Elaine, and Rob yeah. Grant from Red Dwarf. And they've started this company called the Lockdown Theatre Company. Wow. <laughs> so I said, guys, why don't we join forces with the Royal Theatrical Fund and present classics? Because people really are missing classics. You know, Zoom's been great for so many performances musicals and so on. But I just thought, let's bring the classics and let people see it. So uh, every Sunday night for the last few months, we did Waiting for Godot, we did Private Lives and Tom Stoppard's Real Inspector Hound, all of which the estates were so generous and gave us the rights to perform them. We got wonderful people like Emma Thompson and Derek Jacobi and myself and many other actors. Um, and in fact, in a week's time, we've got Ken Branner and Ian McKellen and Derek Jacobi, Maggie Smith and Judy Dench doing a called Knights and Dames. Ooh, fantastic cast. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of thing we've been able to get together. Um, but then again, you know, that's what I love about this industry. We're all out to help each other. The three plays we've managed so far have just raised £130,000. And that money is now being distributed amongst those in need. Oh, that's wonderful. That's so wonderful. You know, I'm sitting here in awe because <laughs> I saw you on Broadway do me and my girl. And I was there opening night. And I thought, I've just seen the most talented person in the world on stage. It was like, I was like watching what I would have thought Charlie Chaplin. I mean, I, I couldn't believe. I was just in awe, and I, I'll never forget it. You presented me with the Tony Award. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I my God. On, you can see it on YouTube. I, 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 my son showed me constantly They they because they asked me what a Tony Award was, and I said, well, you know, and they found it on YouTube, and there you are. You presented me with it. Well, I'm going to add that to my memory because you, that, you performed and had such a very, varied career, haven't you? I mean, both on television and movies and musical theatre. I mean, do you have a preference for 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 one over the other, or is it all well, just I'll tell you something now? Fun? I'm just waiting to. Uh, in fact, I'm sitting here with a docu sign, which is something I've never heard of before. Will you sign? Will you sign on your iPad? And I have a, a contract here, and I thought you two girls might be really interested because he's offered me, and I haven't agreed to it yet. I'm, I'm about to sign it. He's, off, he's offered me anything goes. Wow. Oh, I've done anything goes here. I, in fact, uh, in in the UK, I uh, I produced it, co-produced it with Robert Fox here in the West End, 
And why um, did you do that? Where was that on? It was on at the Prince Edward Theatre in oh, 1989, and uh, and I played um, Reno. Reno, yeah, Reno Sweeney, and it's a great, fun, uh, uplifting, fun story. So should I sign? I'd go for it if I were. I love musicals. I mean, I just think that certainly at the moment when this offer came in, I just suddenly thought, yeah, that's just what people need at the moment. We need to be uplifted, don't we, and, and entertained and taken away from this dreary, dreadful, grim real life that we're all having to go through at the moment. So it sounds like a goodie to me. Now, the only thing that keeps me going is uh, are the dogs. I've just got back from a dog walk. Um, you know, what, uh, what dogs have you got? Tell us about your dogs, your pets. Tell us. Well, I have Billy, who was in here a minute ago. He's gone now. He's, uh, Billy is my lab, and he's quite old. He's 12 now. And then he has a sister called Lola, the showgirl, who yes. is uh, also a Labrador, a blonde Labrador. But we have a, a rescue. Her name's Susan. <laughs> Not my, I didn't choose that name. I was just given that name. So I have a Billy, a Lola, and a Susan. Oh. Which... This is rather ironic because when I did my family years ago with Zoe Wanamaker, the situation yes. comedy, the character, her, she was called Susan. Yes. So people see me in the park shouting Susan, they think this guy's <laughs> completely, he still thinks he's in that sitcom. <laughs> Sue is a great example of a purebred dog that you can get from a rescue. She's part of the that dreadful thing called the puppy trade. Yeah. The, the Dogs Trust found her in a box with her brother. She oh. was three weeks old. They had oh. no water, no food. And whoever were bringing it over from Romania, I, I have to say, fortunately, someone saw them, found them. I can't live with I absolutely adore her. She's a black pug, which are more rare, really, I think. You usually see the other ones, you know, but she's very beautiful. And again, she's a rescue. So again, if people want a certain breed, there are breed specific rescues also. Sure, absolutely. But the thing is, I got a lot of, when I posted uh, online about having my pug, I got a lot of, actually quite a lot of abuse for people saying, oh, trust you to get a, 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 a trendy dog, you know, and I thought, no, the pug is just a rescue dog. It doesn't matter who, what kind of dog it is. I did have a rescue dog called Dodger. And you remember, Elaine, we shared a dresser called Spencer. Yes. Spencer and I were doing Richard III at the Savoy with the Royal Shakespeare Company. I was playing Richard III. Spencer left the dressing room door open and Dodger heard my voice on the tannoy oh, yeah. and decided to come and find me. <laughs> and I was in the middle of wooing Anne. Um, over the coffin of Hastings, you know, the dead body of the king. And I looked in the wings and there was Dodger. Oh, bless. Looking at me, just going, yay! And I go, and I, in the middle of my Shakespearean speech, I went, stay! He <laughs> <laughs> did, he did, he was brilliant. He just sat, he just knew he should not come into this lighted area. <laughs> brilliant story. Bob, listen, I don't know how to thank you for giving up your time and helping us try to find forever homes for, for animals that are currently in, in the shelters across the UK. So thank you, thank you so much on behalf of all the dogs and cats that we're hoping we're going to oh. be home. The Amici uh, Rescue is, is such an amazing, you know, great people. People, I really don't like people who don't like dogs, let's put it that way. I, people who love dogs make people very special. Me too. Uh, yeah, I think anybody, any any animal lover is okay by me. If you don't yeah, like animals, too. there's something wrong with you. Yeah. We're going to see the video actually from this wonderful rescue, the Amiche rescue. And I just, you know, adore you, love you. Just oh, well, that's really to meet thank you guys. And it's I lovely think. to see you both looking really good. And I can't wait to work with you soon. Yeah. yeah let's hope. Yes. Fingers crossed. Love to you and Rosemary and, and the kids and everything. Love to yeah. you all. God bless you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. We're Amici Dog Rescue and we work for We Home and Rehabilitate Dogs from Romania. And we take lots of dogs, dogs with challenging behaviour, dogs that need medication or have medical problems. We've got quite a few disabled doggies. 
we just love jog doggies generally. And um, the great thing about Amici is that when you join the Amici family, you will get lifetime backup and support from our team. That's both for you, the adopter, and for our doggies. So this is Halo. She's six years old. She's a bit of a diva. She needs to be in a home where there's not too many visitors. She doesn't like lots of people coming and going. She is, when she bonds with you, she'll be your friend forever. She is a beautiful, friendly girl. And she loves squeaky toys, don't you? And a nice, soft, squeaky bed. Yeah. So this is Chester. Chester's three years old. He needs a rural home with adults only and preferably as an owner dog. Doesn't play with other dogs, but he likes to live alone. Say hello. He's just like staring at This is Captain. He has been in the UK for a couple of weeks now. He came from our shelter in Romania. He is a super boy, very strong and energetic. But very lovely, thank you. Um, he needs a energetic family, um, no children. He can live with another dog. Super friendly boy, and you're looking for your forever home, aren't you? When, when you adopt an Amici dog, you become, become a part of the Amici family. Hello, this is James Dreyfus coming at you from London with Hobbs, who's being unusually pleasant to me at the moment, because he's not usually this calm. Uh, Hobbs is five years old, and since the lockdown, he's kept us pretty busy, actually. Um, and we're here just to give a shout out to West End Woofs, which is a rehoming um, centre. It has 15 rehoming centres. So um, donate, please, if you are able to at this time um, for little four-legged animals like this. Oh, he just licked my tongue, actually licked my tongue. Um, so good luck to you all. I hope you do a lot of, uh, get a lot of money. And please, please donate what you can. And remember to share the word West End Woofs. Hello, my name's Alex Hansen. And I'm Samantha Bond. And we bring you greetings from South West London. A very wet South West London. Now, um, we have three cats, but we don't actually have a dog. But we've got friends who've got dogs. So we've got in our lives Casey, Daisy, Maisie. And Pegs. And Pegs. And we would like to introduce you to Hope Rescue Centre in South Wales. Near where my dad lived. That's right. Now, if you go to their website and click on dogs, you will come across... Shadow, Sparky, Toby... And Bolt. And Bolt. And lots of other beautiful and gorgeous dogs in need of a home. Now, if you see one you like, why not get in touch? After all, dogs bring you joy. And can change your lives forever. Thank you and God bless. And stay safe. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Xavier. This here is our Cavapoo Winnie. Uh, she is 11 months old. She brings huge amounts of joy to our lives. Um, she's our little fur baby. She's incredibly intelligent, Cavapoos are. Uh, she's also very loving, very needy, which is so cute. She follows us around like a shadow all the time. Uh, I'm very proud to be part of the very first West End Woofs. Um, oh, big yawn. 
Uh, I was part of Broadway Box uh, when I was working on Broadway back in 2017. Um, so it's great to be part of this initiative here in the UK. Um, I hope you can help rehome uh, a dog in need. Sending you loads of love. Bye. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Lucas here in um, cold, wet London at the moment. Um, very comfy in my little house. Uh, I did have two beautiful dogs, but they both passed away in the last year. Uh, I miss them very much. And I would like to get another dog as soon as I can move to somewhere with a bit of outside space, actually. Um, and I think I will get a rescue dog. Uh, if you're thinking of getting a rescue dog, why don't you go to the Hope Rescue Centre in South Wales? They have lots of lovely dogs there all looking for a new home. Uh, let's go and meet some of them now. Hello, I'm Sarah. This is Hope Rescue. We're a rescue centre for dogs in Llanharan in South Wales. Primarily we take in stray dogs, but we also help owners who are in crisis and we help around 900 dogs every year. As with every rescue centre up and down the country, this year has been really difficult for us. Financially, we took a, a big hit. Our charity shop was flooded in Storm Dennis at the beginning of the year. And then when the pandemic hit, we lost our boarding income and our income from our fundraising events. So we're still losing around a thousand pounds every day but we've kept our doors open to dogs that have needed it the most the most vulnerable dogs in the community like little Gwen here Gwen, come on in. Come on in. so you can see Gwen is suffering from quite a nasty skin condition it's something that's probably chronic we're suspicious that she may have um, mange so she's undergoing some treatment at the moment and she is just the loveliest little dog so she's going to be looking for an owner that can continue the treatment that we started with her but as you can see despite her health issues she's just the happiest little lady Giggily. This is Conka, who's a seven-year-old sharp A cross staffy. He came into us when his owner's situation sadly changed and he couldn't care for him anymore. Conka's a really sweet lad. He's quite sensitive around people he doesn't know, so he takes a couple of meets to get to know and trust somebody. But once he does, he's really affectionate and sweet. He is the same with other dogs, so he can cope with other dogs at a distance, but he's quite uncomfortable with dogs sort of that are too full on with him. So he might be able to live with a laid-back female, but ideally he'd be looking for a home as an only dog. He'd like quite a quiet environment. He's not going to ask for much, just some gentle walks, peace and quiet. Good boy. He's house trained and he travels well in the car, and he'd love an owner who's got experience of the Sharpe breed. This is the gorgeous PJ who's a 10 month old Cocker Spaniel cross poodle. PJ is a really active, bouncy, fun loving guy. He's really happy all the time to see people. He loves seeing other dogs. He's got some anxiety around items that he considers high value. So we're looking for an adult only home for PJ who are gonna be patient and understand that they need to not challenge him over things and start to teach him that actually swapping items or bringing items to his own then means that great things happen and he gets swapped for something more high value. He could potentially live with other dogs. He's very playful and he likes to be around other dogs. Hello, Poppy. But they would need to be able to give him some space if he did have items that he didn't feel that he was comfortable to share. He'd love an active home. He'd really enjoy an activity like agility. He's gonna be an absolute little star for the right home. John Barrowman, hello. Hey, hello. 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 I'm lovely to be with both of you. So what I wanted to say to you, first of all, can you believe that you and I have known each other for now 30 years, more than 30 years? Do you remember when Very we long first time. met? I well, I, of course I do. I remember that first, uh, it was the callback I had in London at the Prince Edward Theatre. Got on the stage, I'd rehearsed with other people prior to meeting with Elaine. And then uh, when they said, you know, Elaine Page, and then, okay, and she came up on stage. And I remember you said something to the extent of, because you were doing the show at the time, and you right. said, you said, oh, my legs, a bit sore, my legs. And I, and I went and I said, don't worry, doll, I'll move you around the stage. And you just looked at me like, what? What? 
and that was it. And, I, I, and we, we hit it off. And we, from that point on, you gave me the break and the start of my career, which is now 34 years in, 13, 14 West End shows, two on Broadway, TV shows, albums, you name it. You, so I, you know, you know how I feel about that. I don't have to go, but I do, I gush. Well, you've done a lot. I mean, it, and for me, it's been fascinating, Bernadette, you can imagine, to find this young man, pluck him out of nowhere, as it were, and then for you to star alongside me in Anything Goes, and then to be able to watch your career evolve and, and blossom. It's been a treat for me, I have to tell you. When did you first kind of know that performing and, and being in this industry was something that you wanted to do? Was there a light bulb moment for you? Going back to even when I was three or four years old, my mom and dad, when we lived in Glasgow, Scotland, my mom and dad used to have a lot of parties in the 60s and 70s, and I was always the entertainment, and I would stand with a, wood, a wooden spoon, a very particular wooden spoon, so they should have known them. Um, uh, it was a particular wooden spoon that I would sing a song called Millie Molly Mandy, which was by a, a guy named Glyn Poole. I used to finish school, and I'd get on the bus. One of the neighbors would be on the bus, and that they'd say, John, where are you going? And I'd say, go to see my mum. And they'd say, and they'd make sure I got to the next stop. And then I would be handed over to another neighbor who would then make sure I got to my mom's record store. My mom would put me on the counter. People would come in and ask me to sing the top five hits. And I would <laughs> sing them on top of the record counter. And it was always a Jimmy Osmond song. Oh, of course. <laughs> you remember Millie Molly, whatever you called it? Do you remember that song? Millie Molly Mandy, sweet sugar candy, pretty little eyes of blue. <laughs> Everybody would be if they only could be walking out with you. Oh. Wishing on a Monday when I see you Sunday that you'll find it's true. Millie Molly Mandy, sweet as sugar candy, I'm in love with you. Oh, oh well done. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Remembered every word. How marvellous. <laughs> I'll be on my next <laughs> album. <laughs> so listen, tell me, you were just mentioning before about um, having, I just saw a Great Dane walk past there just now. Can you tell us a bit about that? What's that that's all about? Is that your well, job? No, no, no. We have two friends that have been staying with us since uh, lockdown started and uh, the whole COVID thing began. And because of that, we have, you know, we have three dogs. We have a Jack Russell called Captain Jack. <clears throat> we have a, a little mix called Dixie. And we have a, a Cocker Spaniel called Harris. And we then adopted with, two of those dogs are adopted, but we then adopted into our family along with Clayton and James, the Great Dane and the Boxer who are called Great Dane's called Kylo Ren after the Star Wars villain. And uh, the boxer is called Coda after a bear uh, at Disney. So yeah, they've all got little, and they're all one big happy family now. Well, that's great, they all get on okay. There was a bit of an adjustment because <laughs> the funny. Great Dane thinks he's a lap dog. Right, oh. <laughs> and he's and two Russell years- thinks he's a Great Dane. Correct, and Dixie, who is a little kind of cross between a, uh, I want to say she's, I think she's a cross between a Yorkie and a Chihuahua, but she's more kind of Yorkie, but she's a bigger Yorkie. And she is three, but the Great Dane is two. So he thinks he's a puppy, but tries to play with her and would bat her around the room. And she wasn't having it. <laughs> no. She was not having it. But they've all. Not having it. Terry will not have that. Terriers will not. Yeah. yeah. I've been a long supporter from. The days going back to coming into your dressing room, Elaine, when you had uh, Tugger. Yeah. And uh, that was my first introduction that you could have a dog and still have the career and, you know, integrate it into your life and, and take them with you. Yeah. So from Miss Moneypenny, who was one of my first dogs, and then we've always adopted. It's always good to save a dog because sometimes not only are you saving the dog, but sometimes the dog saves you. All the time. <laughs> oh, look who's here, Rosalie. <laughs> because people can see the, all the rescues that might be near where they live, and they can go right there and get one of those lovely dogs that we're going to show them. It's been medically proven that when you have a dog, 
your blood pressure comes down, your heart rate comes down, you actually, uh, you're not as aggressive as you might think, you know, you, as you normally would be. So it's a very good calming effect. It's, if you want to think of the dog as being like a vodka soda, it's something like a little tipple in the yeah. evening. You sit it on your lap and you can pet it and stroke it and it makes you feel really calm. I've never heard of that simile ever before. <laughs> Who is this cute little dog? This, this is Dixie. When I went to a, a convention in Utah, uh, one of the comic cons, they were doing a, a shelter was doing a rescue where they had all the puppies there. And I sat in the middle of them and Dixie came up to me, came, sat in my lap and she looked at me and she said, I want to come home with you because I want to live in Palm Springs. So Dixie is my, she, we, she wore a white shirt and a black pair of trousers. She's a Mormon and we accepted her like we accept everybody. She, John, do you want to talk about the shelter you're going to introduce and then we'll, we'll cut right to you. The video and everyone can see all the lovely dogs and cats that are at this shelter. I'd like to introduce everybody to a, a shelter that has been uh, uh, part, well, it's been doing and helping animals since 1926. It's, uh, they're based in Gloucestershire and every year they rehome over 650 unwanted and abandoned cats and dogs and small animals. They also take a lot of uh, dogs from the Gloucestershire Constabulary. And in addition to rehoming dogs, they also help owners who no longer can look after their animals and they rehome them. So on behalf of Broadway Barks and West End Wolves, I would like to introduce you to the Cheltenham Animal Shelter. Oh, woof, woof. Woof, woof, woof. Take it in. Hi, I'm Claire Lockie and I'm the canine rehomer here at Cheltenham Animal Shelter. On an average year, we roughly rehome 600 animals and the running cost is £650,000. Unfortunately, this year with COVID, our numbers have dropped by quite a bit um, and we haven't been able to put on the normal fundraising events that we usually do. Um, however, that has meant that we spent a lot more time with the animals in our care, um, got to know them so much better and we've been able to come up with some creative ways of enriching them while they are enjoying their stay with us. Um, and on that note, we would love to introduce you to the dogs that we currently have in our care. So we'd love to introduce you to a few of our canine residents staying here at Cheltenham Animal Shelter. And first I'd like you to meet Murphy and Rocco. These are our four-year-old Chihuahuas and they came into the shelter due to their previous owners just not having enough quality time to spend with them anymore due to a change in their work schedule. These guys are super cute, however they are a little bit nervous from time to time. As it's getting into the winter months and it's getting a little bit chilly, we tried to keep them warm in those cosy little jumpers, but those cheeky rascals tend to always wiggle their way out of them somehow or another. Murphy and Rocco would love to find a home where they can both still be together, but also have an owner that can respect their boundaries. So this is Gizmo from Cheltenham Animal Shelter. He is a relatively new arrival at the shelter. Um, he's about one years old and he was signed over to us because unfortunately his family couldn't, <laughs> Gizmo, couldn't uh, spend enough time with him. Um, he loves his snacks um, and you can use his kibble as well. He literally is not fussy. Um, he also loves a good game, but he doesn't know his own strength. So um, he will get a bit riled up. So good ways to keep him calm are just throwing treats on the ground and he'll focus on that immediately. Um, he's a really, really comfy, cozy boy. He loves a good scratch behind the ears and he is just looking for a home that can physically and mentally stimulate him. So this is Mason. He is a seven-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier. He hasn't been with us long. He unfortunately had to leave his old home as he wasn't the right fit and he was only there for two days. <laughs> he ideally needs somebody who's around the majority of the time as he can be quite anxious because once he makes a bond with you, he wants to be with you all the time. He has to be in an adult-only home with no other pets. He is super friendly and he's got so much love to give. Lisa Bubbles and Daisy, they're eight year old Jet Russell Terrier Crosses. Um, they both came to us in two unfortunate family circumstances and the fact that uh, the, their baby ends up being allergic to the duo. They've been together their whole lives um, and we'd ideally like them going together. Um, Bubbles is the more friendly, has loves his toys, loves his food, as you can see. Um, whereas Daisy Blesser is the more anxious one who absolutely loves being cuddled and fussed as you can see again. Um, ideally, rather than go as just the two in the home with no other pets, 
So this is Buddy, he is a four-year-old Staffordshire Bull Terrier. He came to the shelter just because he didn't get along with the other dogs. Ideally he would love a home where he's the only animal. He would also love a home where the owner is home most of the time, but he does love his walks, but he does get a little bit nervous in situations where he can get a little bit stressed. Hi, I'm David Zippel, and this is Lucky and Happy. And uh, I am here to tell you about how great it is having a dog. Um, these are mutts, but I like to call them golden schnoodles, which is essentially that a, uh, a really cute golden doodle had a very brief affair with the neighbor's miniature schnauzer. Um, dog ownership is a beautiful thing. Uh, rescuing a dog is even more beautiful. I encourage you to consider it right away. And everyone on West End Wolf's, congratulations. My name is Craig Revel Hallward, and I wanted to be part of West End Wolf's because I had two gorgeous doggies that I no longer have, and I miss them terribly. I think animals, pets are very, very great for human beings and especially in these terrible, terrible times that we're living in with this worldwide pandemic. They become friends, you fall in love with them and they help you through the good and the bad. And where would we be without our pets or our animals that we gorgeously love, darling, eh? So please support West End Wolves. Oxfordshire Animal Sanctuary was created to provide a refuge for mistreated, neglected and abandoned dogs, cats and rabbits. Of their 18 employees, 15 work directly with the animals to make sure that the majority of their income goes directly to their care. Typically, they can care for about 100 animals at a time so that each animal gets their share of one-on-one -on -one time with their carer. Some of their rescues become long-term residents and part, of course, of the Oxfordshire Animal Sanctuary family. The staff work 365 days a year and all of them are committed to delivering health, happiness and, of course, ensuring that their animals thrive. OES cares for dogs, cats and rabbits who've been mistreated, abandoned, neglected or are simply unwanted. Every day we care for around 80 animals and we rehome around 500 pets every year. Here are some of the animals currently looking for their forever home. Everybody, so this handsome fella is Joe. He was a 10 year old American Bulldog currently residing at Oxfordshire Animal Sanctuary but will prefer to be residing in your living room. What Joe is looking for is an adult only home that's nice and quiet without too many visitors. So basically you can spend his time just slobbering all over your furniture. He likes to go on short walks because he does have a few leg issues. But if you'd like to come and meet him, make an appointment to come up to IAS and meet the fella. So this is Goldie and Millie. They're a pair of 12 year old cats who sadly came into us because their owner was no longer able to care for them, but have loved them for many, many years. So they're going to be really home together. Once the vets have checked them over, they're very, very sweet. They purr relentlessly and they're going to make some wonderful pets, aren't you? Yeah. Have a look at your room. Hi. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm here with Barney. He's a Dutch uh, rabbit. He's one year old and we're just waiting for him to get a forever home at the moment. And um, I fed him, I've at the moment just socialised with him. I gave him some treats and porridge and uh, puzzle feeders and the stacking cups. And I'm just waiting for and just letting him to do what he wants to do here. At the moment he's just going to be a bit of a nibble, but yeah. <laughs> so this is Cooper. Cooper is a Patterdale. He's almost one year old. He does have a few behavioural issues that we're working on here. He particularly finds new people very scary. But once you're his friend, he's incredibly bouncy, full of energy and really affectionate. <laughs> he's still in his puppy days and if he had a choice, he would play tug all day long. Hello, this is Jax. He is a 13-month-old Jack Russell Cross. 
He is very, very playful and sometimes very vocal. He can certainly be teenagers. Um, he does actually like to be held like this, like a giant baby. So if you'd like to come and meet us, give us a call. Or meet him, give us a call. Or email us at the Oxfordshire Animal Sanctuary. Hello from me and Kirsty. We're very glad to be able to help West End Woofs finding vitally important dog shelters for homeless dogs. You, on the other hand, you have a home and a biscuit. Now have a look at the camera, Kirsty. Oh. <laughs> Don't be sick on the carpet or you will be homeless. So I will now go to play a song, How Much Is That Doggy in the Window, as my contribution to this very good campaign. But I will sing it backwards because it's more interesting that way. Thank you. So one of the uh, shelters that we're highlighting today is it's the RSPCA um, Halifax and Huddersfield and Bradford branch. And, uh, and this is the RSPCA where they aim to rehabilitate and you know abandoned and abused animals. They try to obviously uh, rehouse them and give them a loving, loving permanent home. And there's a special, there's Max in there, isn't there, Bernadette, that you love? He's been with them for over a year, but there's actually Tess the Shepherd, who I've fallen in love with. So if, any, if there are any shepherd lovers out there, she looks just adorable. Oh, bless, oh, bless. So that's definitely one, definitely a shelter worth uh, uh, hooking up to and having a little look. So here they are. Yes. Here are some animals. Hello and welcome to the RSPCA Halifax, Huddersfield and Bradford branch. We are so excited to be part of West End Wolves. Having this opportunity to display some of the dogs that we have got looking for homes is really important to us. And once again, thank you so much for letting us be involved. As you can see, we're here at the centre today and uh, we are a separate set, uh, animal centre from the National RSPCA, uh, which basically means that we have to raise our own funds to run our centre. And our main role here is about rehabilitation, caring for, training and finding homes for all of the animals that we currently care for. Uh, we've got three dogs up for rehoming today, which you're going to see in a moment. And uh, if you are interested in any of the dogs that you see today, or any other animal, because we do deal with cats, rabbits, ferrets, gerbils, you name it, we've got it here. But you can find out everything that we've got up for adoption and everything that we do here at the centre on our website at www.rspcahalifaxhuddersfieldbradford.org.uk. But thank you so much once again for letting us be a part of West End Wolves and enjoy the show.
is Darcy Aloesh. She's my little fur baby. She is nearly 13 years old. I've had her for mm, just over 11 years now. She's a rescue pup. We don't quite know what happened to her. Um, she's got little burn marks on her body, so someone obviously wasn't very nice to her at all, were they? And she, um, she completely lost her sight about five years ago. Didn't you? Hey. Didn't you? Who's this? She's so adorable. I absolutely love her. She's the happiest little thing on this planet. And um, she just makes my life an absolute joy, especially at the moment during lockdown, um, where I'm isolating on my own. And it's nice to have a companion. And she certainly entertains me all day, <laughs> every oh. day. Oh, she's very tired at the moment. <laughs> yeah, she loves that. That's a good spot. <laughs> um, she still struggles every day with um, the fact that she can't really see and keeps bumping into the same things over and over and over again. We're not very bright in this house, are we, Darcy? Um, but she's incredible. I love her. I'm thankful for her. Aren't I? We do argue. She is very naughty as well. She's had enough of me now. <laughs> but she's got a little buggy and we go to the park in it and she's done. She's okay, well look, we've seen some wonderful little animals there, all the cute dogs and the cats and hopefully you've seen some shelters. Uh, there somewhere near you where you live that uh, you feel that you could either donate to help uh, raise some money for the funds to keep the animals look after them or even better maybe you've seen a little dog or a little kitten or a cat <laughs> that you feel that you could uh, you could house because uh, that's what we're trying to do here today we're trying to find homes for as many of these animals that are in shelters as possible because they need your love and you know what now right now during the pandemic it's such a terribly difficult time for all of us and the animals included so maybe the animals can help us and we can help the animals so do have a think about it and please be as generous as you can and i think and if you want to donate you can and you see an animal that takes your fancy or a shelter that takes your fancy you can donate directly to the shelter just donate directly to each shelter that you if you want to give some money and i always say that you know we rescue an animal but it, an animal rescues us yes. very much especially right now i mean with my dogs i've learned how much i didn't know about them i've learned what a large vocabulary they have and i've learned yes. They know whole sentences. They and I'll, know. I'll say, oh, darling, let's not do that now. We'll do that later. And then she turns around and just comes back here goes with me. When I had a tugger, I've only ever owned one dog in my entire life. And it, he was the pride, my pride and joy. I loved him so much. Actually, look, I've got a picture of him here. You see? Whoops. Oh, oh there he is. With a me little, many, many see, years ago. But he was a little pup. And um, and I loved him so. And, and I got him during... Uh, uh, well, I got him just after cats, actually. And I named him after a cat. I named him Tugger, after Rum Tum Tugger in Cats. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I don't think he ever really appreciated that too much because whenever I said, as you say about their vocabulary, he knew when I said cats, I went cats. And he'd go <laughs> completely mad and dash around all over the place and look under cars and behind chairs and... You know, so you're right. They have a, a fantastic vocabulary, and uh, and he he brought much joy and pleasure to me. And as John Barrowman said earlier, you know, he I I used to take him into the dressing room when we were doing anything goes, and he would sit there with his toys and his bed and everything. And he'd hate it though when I'd have to go down onto the stage. He'd, you know, do the glum emotional business on me, you know. But the they sort of know the last number, don't they? And they go, yeah. okay, the show's over. And That's they it. And when I came back up into the dressing room, he'd be wagging his tail, he'd jump up and down as if he hadn't seen me for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it was just yeah. so fantastic. He's, yeah. he, was, uh, he was my little dream boat, yes. So, you know, it's, 
animals make a big difference to how we feel and and, uh, and really we can give them love back and they can give it to us it's, it, it works both ways doesn't it and the other thing i want to repeat is that it's worth repeating is if you have your heart set on a specific breed if you oh i'd love to have a poodle or i'd love to have a labradoodle or i want a cocker spaniel there are breed specific rescues there are rescues right. that rescue just that breed and uh, you don't have to go looking anywhere else you can go to a rescue and you could get a lovely poodle or a cock spaniel whatever you or a corgi Maybe we'll, not one of the queen corgis, of course, because I'm sure she keeps them. But um, some I don't know all animals. kinds of animals. You can get German shepherds or crossbreeds or you know little dogs, big dogs. There, there, there's such a wealth of animals out there. We're going to gonna have, we're gonna list them at the end of this show. Yes, yeah, let's do that. Let's Absolutely go. good idea. Let's go. Yes. Well, Elaine, this has been, I just can't tell you how joyful it makes me that, that you understand. I know you've always loved animals. And I just thought, well, Elaine is, you know, she's the perfect person to just take this forward into the West End because West End woofs. <laughs> West End indeed does woof. And thank you, Bernadette, for uh, allowing us to be able to combine our, our West End woofs with your Broadway box. And let's hope that together we can make a big difference to uh, all the animals all over the US and the UK. Yes, let's do it. Love you so much. It's great to see you, darling. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. You too. Richard Hester, and this is Ziggy. Ziggy is not all that fond of being photographed, so this is the perfect way to do it. I got him in about 2007 from the City Animal Shelter in San Francisco, and he's been with me ever since. Hi, it's Patty Sassenti and Herbert. Say hi, Herb. Can you say hi? Herbert is 18 years old, and I got him at Pet Eye Care in New York 18 years ago, right? 18. Um, I wouldn't know what to do without him. He's my best buddy. Hi, I'm Simon. This is Zeke, and we got Zeke in 2007. And this is Hunk. We got Hunk in 2008. And they've been here ever since. And I was like, what would we do without them? Do you? Get a good boy. Hey there, my name is Scott Stevens and this is my immediate family, Jordan here on my left and Lena on my right. Uh, Jordan I got 10 years ago uh, and I found him through Pet Finder and he was being fostered at a beauty parlor up in Vermont and you'd never know it to look at his hair now, but, or his fur now. And Lena um, is 16 years old, and I found her through Jack Russell Refuge in upstate New York. And she's very, very happy to be here because she is a Parsons Jack Russell Terrier, so she feels a kinship to West End Wolves. This is Oscar. My family adopted him from a place in New Jersey about six years ago. Say hi. He lives in Philadelphia, and I live in London, so I come see him as much as I can. And he's the best little boy in the whole world, aren't you? Say hi. Say hi. I'm Paul Wintorek. This is my little guy, Henry. We're in love. And we really hope that you will consider contacting one of the many amazing shelters in the show and bringing home a little best friend of your own.